as you can see I finally got the alpha counter more or less finished sanded off the uh, Barocca can to, to make it look a bit better and uh, put all the electronics in a box attached a, uh, a digital counter module which I hacked over a bit, removed the button, added a piezo put a LED in there um, I kept its uh, LR55 um, power cell but the uh, the main electronics is, is powered by a 9 volt battery inside the case in the uh, BNC connector here is a JFET a 2N5484 uh, that's buffering the the chamber and as you can see here our source for this experiment is some lantern mantles um, thoriated ones, the thorium nitrate soaked material um, they're a good alpha emitter but uh, inside the plastic bag very very few alphas get through so this is a although it's a relatively strong source inside the bag outside the bag it's a very weak source so you're only getting a few counts per second over the whole surface but we can do some interesting experiments with this uh, what I'll do in a moment is I'll, uh, I'll draw out three cc's of the air inside the bag which is um, contains a reasonable number of atoms of radon um, 220 and I'll inject it into the ion chamber and let it decay and we can actually watch the, uh, the decay down to the background because the half life is about 55 seconds alrighty let's, uh, let's try a stronger source this is the old americium source from a smoke detector The uh, DC levels take a moment to adjust, as you can see. It's actually producing probably more counts than the device can respond to. Although that, uh, the distance, the spacing here between the source and the detector is pretty close to the MFP at uh, an atmospheric pressure for this particular alpha energy. So only a small fraction of them are actually making it through the into the chamber. I can put it at point blank range. You can see it's actually counting too fast for the circuit to count. This this counter module is a bit slow. It's uh, it can probably only do about two counts per second. And um, the filtering in the device limits the the actual and the ion chamber's capacitance limits the entire device's counting rate to perhaps only a oh, maybe three counts per second at most. Anyway, there's nothing exciting inside the chamber. As you can see, it's just full of air. The uh, gate lead of the FET has been extended up into the, um, the chamber and doesn't touch anything. The, uh, the drain goes to the, the can, which is biased to uh, about, about 8 volts. There's a capacitive um, multiplier to keep the the power supply quite noise free. The uh, the source goes to a resistor um, about I think it's 860 ohms so a fair bit of current's pulled through the the FET and uh, from yeah background levels to having the americium source right up against the uh, the window here the uh, bias voltage on the the source of the FET changes by about 50 millivolts which is not an awful lot the um, the voltage is then uh, filtered and amplified significantly so that you can see the small changes probably in the you know tens or hundreds of microvolt region of when a uh, an alpha particle interacts with the gas inside the, the detector alrighty let's take a look inside there isn't a whole lot to see but uh, might as well have a look anyway Just some ribbon cable going to the uh, going to the counter module. In there, we've got a uh, a TL072 op amp, resistors, capacitors galore. That's it, really. The, there's nothing particularly critical. Uh, no extensive need for shielding. 
the main high impedance part is inside the can here and is protected nicely by uh, being surrounded by all the metal that's bonded together so uh, it's it's fairly resistant to, to noise if you put the uh, the window here right up against a power cable sometimes you'll get a little bit of buzz coming through the hysteresis that I added to the uh, the comparator circuit rejects most of it it's uh, it's quite forgiving actually for, for something that that operates uh, the way it does at very very low voltage um, voltages that it has to amplify up Alrighty then, let's suck a little bit of radon out of this. And inject it into the cylinder. I'm going to reset the counter and start my stopwatch. I'll probably edit this, make it a little bit easier on you. Sitting here for uh, an entire half-life is uh, it's going to be pretty boring watching a lead blink, even though they're only 55 second half-lives. Mm, I should get some paper, shouldn't I? Oops. 32 seconds. Okay, 43, 45. And there we go, 31 counts. So the next one will be 1 minute 50. Which we're coming up to. Okay, we had 49 counts at that point. Next one will be 2 minutes 45. Obviously this is not a very precise test, the gas will, uh, even though it's, it's heavier than air, it's, uh, I think its density is about 5 point something, so it'll tend to, to collect in the, in the chamber, but uh, obviously it can diffuse out. Okay, 53. Alrighty, one more half life. I don't think we'll get many counts in the fourth half life. And there we go. Alrighty. So, we got 31, 49, 53 and 55 cumulative counts. And uh, I'll 
draw a pretty picture for you, but as you can see, it decays away quite quickly. Ta-da! Very rough and ready, but uh, what do you know? Physics works.